Richard Scolio, welcome to 7.30. Thank you very much. First question, how are you? I feel, well, I feel good and happy. Um, obviously, going down this brain cancer path has been going now for well, roughly two and a half years, and um, to still be here and able to function in a way that we can have a chat today it fills me with some um, happiness. And uh, brain cancer often pursues, depending on what part of the brain is affected, in ways that restrict you and what you could do. And I've certainly got some restrictions about what I can do, but the fact that, that we can have a chat today, I'm, yeah, delighted to be here. Are you still treating the cancer? Yeah, absolutely. And mm. uh, I think there's a standard for people with brain cancer. Unfortunately, the, the type of brain cancer that I've got is, uh, is an aggressive sort of tumour. There's all different ways that, that, that it's subclassed, but roughly no, 12 to 14 months is the median or average mm. survival. And um, the suggestion that came from my colleague, Georgina Long, who worked with me closely at the Maloma Institute, suggested, you know, do you want to, this is not her words, but have a crack to, to try some of the things that we've pioneered in, in melanoma and have worked in many other cancers try and do some of it in brain cancer, which is somewhat risky. People had suggested maybe drops your survival by 50%. That's a lot. Yeah, well, it's not that much when you're only predicted to be here 12 months. And Sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah, but, well, you know, there's a great team of people mm. around the world who are working on this field, and um, we're part of it in Sydney, and I guess as the largest melanoma treatment and research centre, it gives us knowledge and experience of what you can do. And as someone who's led um, clinical and research work, it, it, you can weigh things up. And, and talking with Georgina and my wife Katie about where to go, it felt right. So that's the path we went down. And um, the, the main thing that was different is that I had treatment with some drugs called immunotherapy that uh, helps your immune system work. And we know from melanoma and now many other tumours that they're more effective when there's given more of it, when there's more mm -hmm. tumour on board. So that's made a massive difference um, in melanoma and hadn't really, we knew about a lot of data, produced a lot of data that was just, just being released. So it seemed Seemed like a, worth a shot and see if we could make a difference. So that's what happened. And how much has that, that work that was done with you, how, how much of that is going to be applicable to other people? Like what have you learnt that, yeah, that will change, that is changing the way we think about brain cancer? That, that's a, a great question. I guess the thing that I didn't explain was by having the, the therapy, immunotherapy, before the tumour was knocked down, there's a risk that it might take off and, and be a lot of problems, but we know from, from other cancer works that it's more effective by giving it early. So it, it felt right when there's been nothing that had improved survival in more than 20 years to try something that might make a difference. And you're saying, just so I'm absolutely clear, you're talking about the immunotherapy crucially comes before surgery. Correct. That's exactly correct. And. Uh, and as far as we were aware at the time, it hadn't been tried like this. But I'm only one patient. It, mm. We can generate science that's attractive, that is it worth pursuing this path with more rigour to see if, if it makes a difference in a larger group of patients. So as one patient, I've generated some scientific data, but it, it, it doesn't prove that it works. A proper trial needs to happen. So why has there been so little progress with brain cancer. We've seen the extraordinary advances that you and your colleagues made with melanoma. Why not brain cancer? Why is it so, seem to be so stuck? That, that's a brilliant, brilliant question to ask. And it's, it's not a simple answer to give. I can give you my understanding of science why it's more difficult, but there's a few things in my mind are, are logical. The fact your brain is inside your head with bony skull all around the outside of it. So to do research, you don't get this opportunity to take big amounts of tissue to do research on. But the, the major one is that virtually all of the cells that are in your brain are integral that they make your brain work, they make you so, so um, 
multitask mm. that you can do things at the same time. And we know a lot about different parts of the brain and what functions where, but to understand it all is is very, very difficult. And um, where my tumour started out was a, a, a part of the brain um, in the temporal lobe and uh, and it, it's in a spot where clinicians need to make decisions about what's the best treatment, what's the least risk for you to still be able to manage and be part of life. And I, luckily for me, where it was, I, I can still have a chat with you and keep contributing to, to society in, in many ways. You've given us so much to individuals, to the community, to science, to research, so much over your life. What do you want us to do now? Where should we be putting money to advance the yeah. causes that you've been so profoundly involved with? Well, to be honest, we need to make a difference. We have made an incredible difference of improvements in outcomes of, of life and disease through new treatments. But unfortunately, brain cancer is at the bottom of that pile and hasn't changed over a period where nearly every other cancers, there have been great improvements. And we talked before about the challenges of brain cancer. We need to work as a team to organise things that by working together, you can have a way bigger impact that will change it. People need to be organised, different skill sets and working together. And I see improvements that are, that are happening but it's not enough. And that's state funding, federal funding, and individual philanthropists, I assume, yeah, all yeah, of them, all yeah, of us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, ultimately, so those uh, um, public and, and private organisations all need to, to um, pitch in. And I feel, I feel I've felt some of that from the public, but brain tumour funding for where it is, the commonest cancer in People who are less than 40 years and the research that's been supported and pushed forward is not at the, at the level that it needs to be in my, well I say humble but it's not humble, in my opinion this needs to happen and ultimately government needs to be number one, pushing the effort in that direction, giving research money, and I know we've had some meetings and pushing things forward and they have uh, funded, but we've got to push this forward to really make a difference. And the uh, community gets behind it when they hear and understand it. Is that part of the reason why, uh, part of the reason for being here is that you can, y you have to choose what you do with your time? Is that why you're still pushing that message? Because it is lagging. It does need better support. Again, very well worded and absolutely correct that I, I have experience in doing this, this sort of work way before I got um, brain cancer and it seemed to help. It's a different road for me now as a patient. I can see that a lot of work that is difficult, but it hasn't been done, that can be done, can be better organised to make a difference. It needs funding and coordination for, for that to happen. And I really want to see this happen at all levels, but uh, particularly pushed along by our federal government and state governments to make a difference. Richard Scolia, you've given us all so much. Thank you for talking to us as well. Absolute pleasure to, to do this. Thank you very much.